Cass Elliot, famously known as Mama Cass, captivated audiences with her musical talent, yet her life was marked by hardships from her debut until her untimely passing. Throughout her career, she held a mysterious secret, keeping it closely until her final days. The identity of her child's father remained a mystery during her lifetime, only coming to light after her death, courtesy of a bandmate. The revelation of the father's identity shocked and deeply disturbed everyone involved. Join us as we explore the circumstances leading to Mama Cass's tragic demise. Who is Cass Elliot? Ellen Naomi Cohen, famously known as Cass Elliot, was a vital member of the Mamas and the Papas, a folk rock group comprising four talented individuals. Revered by fans as Mama Cass, her distinctive contralto voice added a layer of depth and richness to the group's harmonies. However, behind her musical success, Elliot battled inner demons, including emotional struggles and self-doubt. Despite her professional achievements, Cass Elliot faced personal challenges, such as unrequited love, societal pressure regarding her appearance, and the pervasive gender biases of the music industry. Despite these obstacles, Elliot's voice resonated deeply with audiences. Her soulful, commanding style captured hearts and minds, earning her widespread admiration. Beyond her musical contributions, Cass Elliot became a symbol of female empowerment during an era of profound cultural change. She defied traditional gender norms and stereotypes, paving the way for future female artists to express themselves authentically and boldly. Her legacy endures as a testament to her strength, resilience, and unwavering commitment to her art. Following her untimely death, rumors and misconceptions surrounded the circumstances of Cass Elliot's passing. Additionally, unfounded allegations tied her to the infamous Charles Manson and the murder of Sharon Tate. These stories perpetuated a narrative of secrecy surrounding Elliot's life, suggesting she harbored many undisclosed truths. Join us as we unravel the enigmatic persona of Cass Elliot and uncover the mysteries she carried with her. Early Life On September 19, 1941, in Baltimore, Maryland, Ellen Naomi Cohen was born to parents Philip and Bess Cohen. Coming from a Jewish immigrant background, all four of her grandparents originated from Russia and settled in the United States. Elliot's early years were marked by financial struggles, prompting her father to establish a lunch wagon business to support the family, while her mother, a skilled nurse, also contributed to their income. Despite their hardships, Elliot's parents shared a passion for music. Her father loved opera, while her mother played the piano. Elliot's love for music blossomed as she grew older, inspired by artists like Ella Fitzgerald, Judy Garland, and Blossom Deary. She began taking piano lessons and later learned to play the guitar, gravitating towards folk music. Her musical talents were evident in her participation in her high school choir and theatrical performances. At the age of 17, Elliot adopted the nickname Cass, a derivative of the nickname her father gave her, Cassandra, after the prophetess in Greek mythology. She later adopted the surname Elliot, in honor of a friend who had passed away in a tragic car accident. Despite not completing high school, Elliot boldly decided to pursue a career in stage acting, moving to New York City. Her determination and fearlessness in pursuing her dreams showcased her unwavering belief in her destined greatness. Cass Elliot's talent propelled her into the spotlight, securing several off-Broadway roles and joining the touring company of The Music Man. Despite her success in theater, the income from her gigs was insufficient to cover her expenses, leading her to take on directing roles at Ellen Stewart's Café La Mama. In addition to her prowess as a singer and actress, Elliot showcased her versatility as a stage director, further highlighting her multifaceted abilities. Her time in Manhattan immersed her in the dynamic folk music scene, where she crossed paths with numerous talented individuals who played pivotal roles in shaping her journey to fame. With each opportunity and encounter, Cass Elliot's star continued to rise, fueled by her undeniable talent and unwavering determination. Marriage to Jim Hendrix 
Cass Elliott's life intertwined with James Richard Hendrix, known as Jim Hendrix, an accomplished American guitarist and folk musician. Elliott, captivated by Hendrix's musical prowess, invited him to join the Big Three, a New York folk group she was part of alongside Tim Rose. Their collaboration proved successful, leading to tours with comedian Bill Cosby and appearances on The Tonight Show. Their union was also motivated by a desire to shield Hendrix from the Vietnam War draft, a common practice during that era. Despite their marriage in 1963, rumors circulated that it was never consummated. Their relationship eventually ended, and they annulled their marriage in 1968. Amidst these personal developments, the Big Three evolved into the Mugwumps in 1964, incorporating Canadian musicians Denny Daugherty and Zalman Yanovsky. The Mugwumps, with their blend of folk and electric sounds, received critical acclaim but failed to gain significant public attention. Despite their brief existence, the Mugwumps laid the groundwork for Elliot and Daugherty's future stardom, marking the beginning of their illustrious careers. The Mamas and the Papas The forming of the Mamas and the Papas was sparked by a chance encounter between Cass Elliott and Denny Daugherty in the vibrant folk music scene of Greenwich Village, New York City in the early 1960s. Both renowned musicians in their own right, Elliott and Daugherty joined forces with John Phillips and his wife, Michelle Phillips, to create the iconic group. Elliott's inclusion in the group faced initial resistance from John Phillips, who expressed concerns about her voice range, weight, and temperament. Despite her insecurities stemming from a lifelong struggle with obesity and body image, Elliot persisted and ultimately proved her worth, completing the quartet. The Mamas and the Papas' unique sound and personality emerged from the blend of Elliot's contralto, Michelle Phillips's soprano, Daugherty's tenor, and John Phillips's guitar skills and leadership. According to Elliot's daughter, Owen, the group's name was born from a casual moment while brainstorming for a new name. Initially considering the New Journeymen and the Magic Circle, the group struggled to find a suitable name. However, Elliot's spontaneous inspiration came while watching a television show where a man referred to the women as Our Mamas. This inspired Elliot and Michelle to claim the title of Mamas, with the boys naturally becoming the Papas, solidifying their identity as the Mamas and the Papas. Their path to success was fraught with challenges, including a move to the Virgin Islands where they spent five months honing their harmonies while struggling financially. Despite their hardships, the group's unwavering dedication and talent eventually led them to stardom, leaving an indelible mark on the music industry. The Mamas and the Papas embarked on a journey filled with confidence and determination, believing their music would resonate with audiences. They took a bold leap, flying to Los Angeles to pursue a record deal, which led them to Lou Adler, the founder of Dunhill Records. Impressed by their music and dynamic, Adler became their manager and recorded their music, endorsing their chosen name, The Mamas and the Papas. Their debut single, California Dreamin', co-written by John and Michelle Phillips, became an instant hit upon its release in March 1966. Selling over one million copies and reaching number four on the charts, the song's success extended to the United Kingdom, where it peaked at number 23. Their follow-up single, Monday Monday, achieved even greater success, topping the charts in the U.S. and reaching number three in the U.K. The album, If You Can Believe Your Eyes and Ears, further solidified their success, selling over one million copies and dominating the charts for over two years. The group capitalized on their momentum, releasing four more hit singles, including I Saw Her Again, Words of Love, Dedicated to the One I Love, and Creek A Alley, all of which reached the top five on the charts. Their second album, also titled The Mamas and the Papas, was met with acclaim, selling another million copies, their musical prowess was recognized with a Grammy Award for Monday Monday. By 1967, the Mamas and the Papas had become one of the most prominent folk pop groups in America, symbolizing a cultural revolution. Their eclectic style, K 
characterized by fur hats and unconventional attire, aligned them with San Francisco's counterculture, embodying the spirit of the emerging flower power and power to the people movements. Despite their sophisticated commercial production, their music conveyed a sense of simplicity and innocence, resonating with the changing landscape of the rock music industry. Cass Elliott's charm and humor, influenced in part by her size and weight, endeared her to audiences and distinguished her as a beloved member of the Mamas and the Papas. Her distinctive, warm voice played a significant role in the group's success, solidifying her status as one of its most cherished members. A pivotal moment for the group was their participation in the three-day international pop festival organized in June 1967 in Monterey, California, by John Phillips and Lou Adler. This historic event served as a launching pad for legendary artists such as Jimi Hendrix, The Who, and Janis Joplin. The Mamas and the Papas headlined the festival's final night, unaware that it would be their last live performance together. Following the festival, Cass Elliott's life took a downturn, leading her into a series of controversies and personal struggles. Her journey post-festival was marked by unexpected twists and turns, reflecting the complexities of her life beyond the stage. Controversies Cass Elliott's personal life became entangled in a web of controversy and betrayal, leading to the eventual breakup of the Mamas and the Papas. Rumors circulated that Elliot harbored feelings for her bandmate, Denny Daugherty, who in turn had an affair with Michelle Phillips, who was married at the time and a close friend of Elliot's. This affair, among other tensions within the group, contributed to their decision to part ways. The group initially fired Michelle Phillips with Elliot's support, due to the strain her presence caused, especially for Michelle's husband, John Phillips. They temporarily replaced her with Lou Adler's girlfriend, Jill Gibson, but ultimately reinstated Michelle. Gibson received a lump sum payment for her brief tenure, expressing feelings of betrayal afterward. In a bizarre twist, Cass Elliott's name was connected to the infamous Manson family murders. Charles Manson, the cult leader behind the murders, had frequented gatherings at Elliot's residence, and his bus was often seen parked at the home of John and Michelle Phillips. Despite Michelle's affair with Roman Polanski, Sharon Tate's husband, it was Elliot whom John Phillips blamed for bringing killers into their circle, alleging her involvement in Sharon Tate's death. This unfounded accusation, coupled with fear instilled by Phillips, caused Elliot significant distress. These allegations became known to the police during the Manson family investigation, leading to Elliot and John Phillips being subpoenaed to testify, though they were ultimately not called to do so. This tumultuous period marked a dark chapter in Cass Elliot's life, overshadowing her musical achievements with the Mamas and the Papas. Personal Struggles Cass Elliott's remarkable voice was often overshadowed by societal prejudices regarding her weight. Nicknamed Mama Cass due to her size and warm demeanor, Elliott disliked the label, considering it a stigma. Despite not having children, she was often referred to as Mama, a term not applied to her much slimmer bandmate, Michelle. Struggling with obesity from a young age, Elliott faced immense pressure to conform to societal standards of beauty exacerbated by the prevalence of slim actresses like Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor. She attempted numerous crash diets, at one point losing 120 pounds, but struggling to maintain the weight loss. Elliot, however, maintained a positive outlook, believing that her size set her apart from other singers and contributed to her fame. She dismissed claims that her jolly attitude was a defense mechanism, asserting that she was comfortable with herself as she was. In addition to her weight issues, Elliot battled drug and alcohol misuse, which likely contributed to some of her erratic behavior. In 1967, she was detained in Southampton and accused of theft, though the charges were dropped. The incident led to the cancellation of several Mamas and Papas concerts. The official breakup of John and Michelle Phillips' marriage in 1968 was a significant factor in the group's dissolution. Following the breakup, Elliot embarked on a solo career, 
signing a lucrative contract to perform in Las Vegas. However, her health took a turn for the worse, leading to the cancellation of the show and an extended hospital stay. This experience prompted her to vow to never again be dependent on alcohol and drugs. Mama Cass's Solo Career Despite her initial dislike for the nickname Mama Cass, Cass Elliott embraced it as she embarked on her solo career, becoming the most successful former member of the Mamas and the Papas in her solo endeavors. While her former bandmates also pursued solo careers, Elliott stood out with her prolific output of albums and singles, along with a busy schedule of live performances in nightclubs. Elliott's career continued to evolve as she experimented with different musical styles, collaborating with artists like the group Electric Flag and British rock star Dave Mason. Although some of these projects, like the album with Dave Mason, received critical acclaim but did not achieve commercial success, Elliott remained a prominent figure in the music scene. She made frequent television appearances on shows like The Red Skelton Show and performed at venues like Fillmore East alongside Mason. Even as the era of flower power waned and a sense of disillusionment spread, Elliott maintained a positive outlook on her career and life. Her songs, such as Make Your Own Kind of Music, found new audiences when featured in popular TV series like Lost and Dexter, further solidifying her place in music history. Elliot also lent her voice to animated shows like the new Scooby-Doo movies and Scooby-Doo, Mystery Incorporated, showcasing her enduring appeal across generations. Her continued success and influence on popular culture were testament to her talent and resilience. Cass's Sudden Passing Cass Elliott, also known as Mama Cass, married journalist Donald von Wiedenmann, heir to a Bavarian barony, in 1971. However, their marriage ended in divorce after just a few months. Despite the short-lived marriage, Elliott briefly enjoyed the title of Baroness. Tragically, her life came to an untimely end on July 29, 1974, when she died of a heart attack at the London Palladium Theatre at the young age of 32, while at the height of her career. The coroner speculated that Elliot's heart had weakened over time, possibly due to her weight and the effects of crash diets she had undergone. Despite these challenges, Elliot's daughter later revealed that her mother passed away peacefully in her sleep. In a strange twist of fate, Elliot died in the same bed, in the same room, as Keith Moon, the legendary drummer of The Who, in an apartment owned by singer-songwriter Harry Nilsson. Following her death, Elliot's ashes were scattered over the Pacific Ocean. An urban legend emerged after Elliot's passing, claiming that she died from choking on a sandwich, sometimes specifically described as a ham sandwich. This rumor persisted despite the coroner's conclusion that her cause of death was heart failure, with no evidence of food obstructing her airway. The myth became so widespread that several songs were written referencing it, including tracks by Frank Zappa, T.I.S.M., Weird Al Yankovic, and Fetus. Despite the circumstances of her death, Cass Elliott's legacy endures, with artists like Crosby, Stills, and Nash dedicating songs and albums to her memory, highlighting the lasting impact of her life and music. Another myth surrounding Cass Elliot suggests that she desperately sought to join the Mamas and the Papas, even going so far as to stalk them to the Virgin Islands, where she was supposedly accepted into the group. According to this tale, her voice miraculously changed after being hit on the head by a piece of copper tubing. However, there is no truth to this story, as a minor head injury cannot change one's vocal cords. The reality is that Elliot was indeed hit on the head with a copper pipe during a nightclub renovation, but this incident did not alter her voice. It is believed that John Phillips, a member of the Mamas and the Papas, jokingly started this rumor, suggesting that her head injury was the reason he finally allowed her to join the group after she persistently tried to be part of it. Who is the father of Cass Elliot's daughter? When Cass Elliot gave birth to her daughter, Owen Vanessa, 
she chose not to reveal the identity of the father. Despite rumors suggesting that John Lennon of the Beatles was the father, this claim is entirely unfounded and likely stems from Elliot's admiration for the band. In fact, in the Mamas and the Papas rendition of the song I Call Your Name, Elliot can be heard calling out John Lennon's name, which may have contributed to the speculation. As Owen Vanessa grew up, she reached out to Michelle Phillips, her mother's bandmate, for help in finding her father. Michelle, shaken by Elliot's death but determined to assist, made inquiries among her musician acquaintances and after a year of searching, located him. In 1987, Michelle informed Owen that she had found her father, Charles Wayne Day, a bassist who had played on songs like Monday Monday and California Dreamin'. When Owen met her father for the first time, she immediately felt a connection. Charles Wayne Day expressed his love for her, and the two discovered they had much in common. This reunion brought father and daughter together after years of separation. In 2022, Owen Vanessa ensured that her mother's legacy would be remembered by securing a spot for Cass Elliot on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Additionally, Owen wrote a memoir titled My Mama Cass, which is set to be released in May 2024, further honoring her mother's life and career.